Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at an interesting question that uh, somebody raised, and that is why your autopilot is incapable of following a VOR as well as an autopilot is capable of following a GPS. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, we have some really, really nasty weather today. Uh, this is nice thick. I can just about make out the ground. In the real world, this thing would be so bouncy you'd want to puke. <laughs> but fortunately, we don't have to worry too. So we're going to be flying up to Bradley International. This is actually kind of a two-parter. We'll take a look at both components at a later. And we want to use VOR to basically get to Hartford VOR, and then we're going to come swing up towards uh, Bradley. We're over uh, Groton, Connecticut. We're basically cruising up the Connecticut River at this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the appropriate frequency here. We're looking for 11490. Go ahead and swap. We want to confirm that we we are indeed on the correct frequency. Looking right here, I've got a Hotel Foxtrot Delta, which means I am. We're going to come down here to our CDI. You know, we can see that our current course doesn't quite get us lined up properly. So I'm going to go ahead and play with the course knob here to see if I can narrow it in and kind of lock onto it. Of course, what did I do is I took my course in the absolute wrong direction as I should have. Ready, set. Is the needle going to start coming? There it is, right there. I'm going to go ahead and flip on navigational hold. Now the aircraft is going to go ahead and take a left turn and start bringing us towards there. Uh, one thing I do want to know, though, is I want to go ahead and display a little bit of information here. We'll go ahead and do bearing one. I can see I'm about 25 nautical miles away from Hartford, and we're basically zeroing in on that first VOR pretty much straight off our nose. Now, one of the things you're probably going to notice is the fact that as we travel towards Hartford, and I'll speed up time so you can see this, this aircraft is going to be utterly incapable of safely following that line. Now, you're probably sitting there going, well, it's probably going to do a decent job of it. And I'll be like, yeah, it's not going to be too bad. And you're actually going to be kind of curious as to why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my best uh, Microsoft Paint here and kind of take a look at the problem. So here's our little VOR station. Again, I'm not going to make this very sun. This is us. So the way a VOR station works is it basically broadcasts radials out from it. Now, these radials are each exactly one degree wide. And again, this is a very, very simplified view of what this looks like, which means our aircraft knows it's on the correct radial as long as it's inside of the one degree arc from the actual station that is radiating itself. So, for example, if this particular radial, again, all radials go away from the station, let's assume this is a south radial right here, as long as I'm inside of this zone, the aircraft assumes assumes that it is in the correct area. Now, the problem with that is, is if you take one degree and you bring it out a total of 30 nautical miles, this distance here that makes up a safe entrance to this radial is a half of a mile wide. If you were actually to go out 60 nautical miles, this entire radial would actually be a mile wide. Now, remember, since our tools are only accurate to that degree, that means we could be anywhere inside of this and still technically be receiving the appropriate information to know that we're actually approaching the radial correctly. Now, to make this problem a little bit bigger, if we actually pop over to the aircraft itself, you'll notice that the radial, the actual VOR here, the sensor built inside the aircraft, is only four degrees accurate. What does that mean for us? Well, if you combine how accurate the VOR is, plus how inaccurate the actual radial is, you suddenly find yourself in a situation where that one degree can be as wide as five degrees. Now, because in the real world, the electronic signals do not pass nice and evenly to the airplane, you run into a situation where that gets all magnified. And I've had actual situations where my CDI would be pointing something like west, even though the aircraft is flying to the east because of just how, actually it's not then that bad, to the uh, northwest because of just how inaccurate it is until it can get a reliable enough signal. The other thing that makes it more challenging is the fact that VORs are actually going to be dependent on the propagation of the signal, which means if something blocks it like it's not on a hill, we won't be able to safely actually acquire its position. So what do we do to fix this? Well, the simplest way to stop the aircraft from going left and right, if I'll actually speed up time real quick to show what this looks like, yeah, you can see we're going to start oscillating a little bit, and then we're going to start wiggling. Again, at this distance of 25 nautical miles, it's only half a mile wide, so it's not too bad. It's not as obvious. The simplest method is what I do is I let the aircraft go ahead and center itself on the VOR. I press the heading bug hold, and then I come down here and lock on heading mode instead of locking on nav mode. That means that, yes, I'm not truly tracking the VOR anymore, but it's going to stop the aircraft from oscillating kind of left and right along that path as it desperately tries to acquire the appropriate point. Now, the cool thing here is the closer we get to the station, the worse this is going to be. The farther away we get from the station, the wider this is going to be. So you're going to be kind of getting a multiplication of both effects. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'll go ahead and speed up time again. Uh, we're moving up pretty quick here. Uh, let's see here. What am I getting for RPM? I could probably give it a couple extra RPM, get us going a little quicker here. There we go, about 2,600 RPM. And you can see that we're starting to slide slowly to the left here. Keep in mind, the real world, this needle would be doing one of these things. It would never be that even. So I can go ahead and give myself a two degree correction and actually start flying back towards that actual radial itself. Now I'm gonna keep in my high speed here. I'm just gonna study its trend over time. 
it looks pretty even. I'll actually bring it over a couple more degrees to the right. And we're basically flying this VOR directly rather than attempting to fly this automatically. Now, the interesting thing is you're probably sitting there going, what happens if you're flying an ILS? Is this the same problem? Not quite, because an ILS is vastly more accurate. It's also closer range, meaning each one of those little one degree holes is actually going to be significantly smaller. And one of the neat things is you can actually see, there's my heart for VOR right now. You can see as I get closer, it starts getting a lot more sensitive. Come a little to the right here, and you can actually see on the chart itself how accurately our little heading hole is able to do this. So even though it shows that we're slightly off to the right here, that's okay for VORs. And you can see we're going, whoops, right over the tippy top like that. And we actually did a pretty good darn job. And you can watch the needle freaking out as it kind of reacquires. Again, this is more something you're going to fight even worse in the real world than you're going to fight inside the simulator itself. So hopefully that answers that question as to why uh, that particular issue uh, presents itself. Again, it just happens to be because of how inaccurate it is. You saw my bad paint drawing and kind of how you can work away with it. Obviously, if you're working massive distances and you don't care so much, leave it on nav mode and it's really not going to be that bad. It's only about four degrees wide. But keep in mind, if you're trying to narrow, uh, navigate in super duper tight spaces on specific radials, that could get kind of tricky. But again, that's why GPS is so popular. Other than that, enjoy.